The Thinking Tackle Podcast. I used to be in a studio and I did used to watch Joe Rogan and stuff. Right. And uh, I did like the, the just people, body language, you mm -hmm. know, people sort of feeding off of each yeah. other and seeing people's expressions. When I listen to these, I, I mean, I'm not so keen on this. Right. But it's surprising because a lot of people do listen to podcasts because, yeah, they, because yeah. they're driving. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Yeah. You can just um, you can just whack them on and uh, yeah. and listen to them. I listen to sort of audio books like that as well. Otherwise, I'd never I'd never read a book. So uh, no, no, I, I'm not a, I'm not a good reader. <laughs> no, you don't read anything. No, Apart not from really. fishing books. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, yeah, not yeah. I, I watch it all on YouTube now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easier. Yeah, it's it's just I find it much better. You know, just to to watch it on YouTube and yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's it's all there, yeah. isn't it? I like I like getting my my uh, heavy rock on in the car. <laughs> what sort of heavy rock is it then? Like well, Thin Lizzy and you know Prince, all all sorts really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prefer driving to music myself actually. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, David Seaman, pleasure to have you on the podcast. Pleasure. Looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming on. Right at the start of the show. We always ask. <laughs> we always ask for a little di donation. Like yeah, said, it's a favorite bit every time. I was like, oh god, what do I take? Do I bring like my England caps and my medals? And I'm like, no, <laughs> not giving those away. <laughs> well, that would be all right. <laughs> but um, well, actually, it's, you made it easier for me because you said oh, I need to bring a gift in as well, don't I? So yeah. it's it, you know we didn't need to ask you as such. So. I know. So uh, I watched it and I thought, right, well, there's only a couple of things that you know that I could bring in. Obviously, a pair of gloves that I've actually worn. And and actually, you, you won't be seeing me wearing gloves again because I've actually given up playing in goal now. Have you? Oh, yeah. I don't enjoy it anymore. When did you stop? So, like, I retired 16 years ago, but um, I recently did Harry's Heroes too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of and course. and it, was, it was like during that and during Soccer Aid as well, I played every Soccer Aid apart from the last one. And I enjoyed it to start with. And then I found myself, like, I'd be in goal. I'm only in goal for the first half. And as soon as we kicked off, I'd be like looking at the clock, thinking, please <laughs> hurry up. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I know that it's, it's a weird feeling that you, in your head, you know that you can do or you think you can do it, but the body tells you totally different. You know, and we had, when we did the first soccer aid, me and Peter Schmeichel were training and, um, and, and we looked at each other and then we went, you're right. And I was like, not really. He went, no, I'm not. He says, like, you know, in, like you say, in your head, yeah, yeah, I've got this. And then the body's like about two or three seconds later and it's such a horrible feeling, you know, because you know you could, you could do it, but now you can't. That's and I, really... I'm, now, I'm now at that stage where I feel it's like almost like embarrassing because it takes me about three days to get up from a safe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, right, that's it. So there's a pair of gloves that I know I won't be using uh, again. And you've signed it. What, and so, I've signed them. Well, we know on this podcast we're in safe hands anyway, yeah. so don't we? <laughs> You've been Sorry, where did you wear these? What, what games did you wear that, these? That would be uh, Harry's Heroes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, so, that's great. Thanks yeah. very much for that. You're Very welcome. appropriate. And then my second gift is one of my favourite memories, actually. Mm. So my last my last ever game for Arsenal. Sorry, David, you all right to hold that up a bit higher for us? Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it was my, um, my last, last ever game for Arsenal. Um, and at the time, I didn't know that it was going to be my last game. Um, but I was captain because Patrick Vieira, uh, he was injured. Um, and I introduced all the players to, you know, to all the Brilliant. Royals and all that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it was a great day. And it was made even, even more special by it being my last game. That's but the ultimate memory, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, winning the FA Cup. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, a few days after that, you know, I got news that I was going to be leaving Arsenal you know Arsene Wenger phoned me up said look David I've got an offer for you I said okay and he went I want you to be my number three goalkeeper and I was like oh really <laughs> after being captain and <laughs> raising the trophy he said but I want you to be my goalkeeping coach and I thought okay that's that's something that I, I'm really interested in um, and then he hit me with there's a 75% wage drop and I just started laughing I was on the beach in Portugal <laughs> and um and he, and, he, and he said, look, whatever decision you make, I will totally respect it. And I said to him, you know what I'm going to do. I still feel I can play for another year. And, and that's how, why and how and why I ended up at Man City. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, yeah. So you weren't expecting that then? You were expecting no. to, to fully to stay on at Arsenal for, for at least another season? Yeah, you know, even if it was, um, you know, even, even the prospect of being number three and his coach, really, you know, I thought, yeah, I'd quite fancy that. Yeah. Um, but the 75% wage drop was a, 
bit of a turning point. Do you think he had that in his mind when he put you as captain for that game then, that that was, that was what no, was going to happen? No, because I was vice-captain anyway. Yeah. Um, so Patrick was always the captain. Right. And then whenever he didn't play, I was always captain. Mm. Yeah, you know, so I was number two. Yeah. Um, God, it, was it, was fun. <laughs> it was funny as well, after when we, when we won the game, so after the game, we're waiting to go and lift the trophy and Patrick's got his suit on. And I said to him, I said, by the way, we're, we're lifting this together. He's like, no, we're not. No. I said, oh. we are. I said, you're the captain. I'm the vice captain. I said, we're lifting this together. He's like, no chance, no chance. So I said, right. If you don't lift it, I'm not lifting it. And he was like, what, really? really? So if you ever see the pictures of the team with the trophy, Patrick's <laughs> there with his suit on and we're both like this. <laughs> two, two warriors, though, weren't yeah. you? Oh, Vieira yeah. was a player as well, wasn't he? Oh, yes. God, blimey. Special player. Yeah. Okay. Um, so footballers and fishing in general, then. Yeah. Um, did you did you uh, say to us that um, when you used to go off and uh, do your fishing that <laughs> certain players would yeah, use well, that as a bit yeah, of an excuse? Yeah, there to... was. Yeah, because I so we we used to get mainly used to get uh, Wednesday off. Um, so that would mean like a little bit of harder training on a Tuesday, and then some of the players would be like go on, on to the Arsenal drinking club that that developed and. Uh, and I thought, no, I quite fancy going fishing. So I would like go night fishing. But then I later found out that some of the lads were actually saying that they would say to their wives and girlfriends that they were going night fishing with me. And obviously they weren't. They were <laughs> going elsewhere. Fenger was probably thinking, crack, I've got an awful lot of fishermen <laughs> in this yeah. team. <laughs> and George Graham as well. And George yeah, Graham right, was right. a very strict guy. Right. Yeah, but um, yeah, it, it was funny. And, and that, but that's, what, that's the only time that we used to get when I was playing is like the days off. Um, I'd, I'd go on the Tuesday night and do an all, se- all, all night session. I used to love it as well. Yeah. So yeah. It, you've been doing it since you were a kid? Um, a little bit. I started when I was probably about 10 or 11. A couple of my, my, my dad's mates, often, only from the local pub, used to have their, their fishing matches on a Sunday morning. They took me with them one day and uh, we were fishing some, I think it was in Lincolnshire or something. We we're fishing some fens or drains or whatever they're called. And, um, and I remember like getting my first bite and like this fish really pulling and I, I didn't know what it was, you know, and, and I didn't even know what to do. So I just pointed the rod at the fish. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, no, if work? I pull that back up, that'll snap. So I just pointed the rod. Yeah. Next thing, the line snapped oh, what and a everything. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Amazingly. And then, um, you know, so that, that was my first ever experience of fishing. Um, and then it wasn't until a few years later when I, when I was at Birmingham and um, I got got into it through my ex-brother-in-law and he's like, come on, we'll go. And we went to Cuttle Mill. I was living in Birmingham at the time. It's and a Cuttle great place Mill. to go yeah. to. Yeah, but I, fi- I didn't fish the main yeah. lake. I, you know, I, I, we started fishing on the, like, there's a little match lake at the side. And I remember just hooking these like two pound carp on a float, on float rods and thinking, wow, these are great. You know, and then all of a sudden getting snapped up by a bigger one and then thinking, right, I want to try and catch these bigger ones, you know. But then all of a sudden, I saw a proper big one in the, you know, that somebody had caught in the the lake next door, and I was like, wow! I just, I never. But you knew. never fished the main lake. No, I didn't. Pretty lake. That I is, know it? it looked great with yeah. a house right up to yeah, it and everything. Yeah, yeah. And I used, to, you know, obviously, I, I knew the owner because I don't know whether it, I can't remember where Tony's name was, but I can't remember whether he was a Villa fan or a blue a, a Birmingham. Tony fan. Higgins. That's wasn't it? it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And. Um, you know, we used to have good chats and everything. And but no, I, I never. I saw a twenty-five pounder on the bank, and I just thought it was like a blooming whale. <laughs> did you ever watch the Des Taylor video? Uh, Des Taylor done it. Yes, you watched that. I did. That yeah. was the, that was like the ultimate introduction to carp fishing. Yeah, it? no, but he like he made it look easy though, didn't he? he? Did. Oh, because he was actually twenty. What was that? Late eighties? Do you think? Yeah, that sort of time. Yeah. And he caught some and good caught fish a on lot there, of didn't fish, he? And, and, uh, you know, the old the pe- pontoon swim. Yeah, but the people that I, you know, that I used to go and have a chat with, and I, I like I say, I went up there quite a few times, and I only ever saw one fish caught, you know, on the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't as easy as it no. looked, was it? No. But the, from then onwards, then that was it. The, you, you, so really, you, you got the bug while you were actually playing professional football. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. And um, you know, and, and then it, it, it slowed down a bit, and then the golf took over. I played a lot of golf, and. Um, you know, and I just thought that I was trying to do the golf to relax, but I would walk off the course more frustrated than I'd walk. I know on exactly it. what that feels <laughs> like because I played, ra- played <laughs> rubbish. It like you saw it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like, hang on a minute, this is like totally defeating the object. Yeah. And um, and then I got back into it, you know, and it wasn't. And I got it was when I was at um, at QPR, and I moved into a, a village called Ivor, which is right next to Farlows, yeah. Yeah. and. 
and I could almost, you know, if, so I, I lived on the outside of the M25, but it was like a farmer's field under a bridge where the, I think it's the colne that runs down through mm. there, mm. down at the side of there. And, um, and I could get through and I could actually carry my gear, walk under the M25 and I'd be on Farlow's. Yeah. How often did you fish Farlow's? God, a lot. Did you? Yeah, a real lot. Um, I, I remember catching my first ever 20 on there on my first ever homemade boilie. A peanut boily it was. And did you say it was your last homemade boily as well? Did you? Did it you? probably was. Yeah, I can't remember it. I, I can remember doing. <laughs> no, was it nod oil? What was the? It was nod oil, salmon, salmon oil, Premier, yeah, and Premier nod oil. Bates, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So we we ended up using them on there, and um, so I probably I think I made a I might have made a few of them, but my friend always used to make them, and I remember it's always like having them in the in the plastic bag with all the oil on the yeah, sides and shaking yeah. them, and then whacking them out to this gravel bar at Farlow's and. Uh, yeah, I had quite, had quite a few decent ones as well. That, but, that was good stuff, that, that nod oddle, I think, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Need to get hold of some of that I stuff know. now. And then, and then, you know, like, but not just sticking to carp, you know, like getting the pike gear out and stuff like that, you know. And I remember having a, a 19 pound pike on a live bait there. And yeah, See. lots, lots, of, lots of decent pike. Because the pike used to, they used to push all the, all the silverfish into this little bay. And you'd see, like, the rest of the lake would be empty, but there'd be about 20 anglers on this bay, you know, with all, all with their pipe floats in the middle of it, you know. So. Were you working it out then? That's, that's what was going on with the, with the pike as well. I mean, that's a good opportunity to fish for some pike as yeah. well, isn't it? When well, no, you know yeah, that. you do, and you worked it out. And then, you know, it was the same when early spring, when they, uh, they, they <laughs> I remember they used to open in the close season because they'd put like so many hundreds of trout in it, it there was, that's what they're calling it wasn't yeah, it yeah you know you could fish for trout with sweet yeah. corn and stuff oh amazing <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> oh we would go there in a the close season that was the only place you could go to yeah. in the area wasn't it yeah for, but for then some... and then getting the tench you know like catching some big tench i've had like an eight and a half pound tench out of there you know and and this is like in 1987 88 you know, so it was it was good stuff, like and that. a good lake to learn on as well, isn't it? Because I mean, it's a proper old gravel pit yeah. as well, isn't it? Like oh, it is. Many and people know, and uh, and even now, it's uh, you know, I think, that's I think, an awesome I lake, think it's got it? better. Yeah, you know, with the, with the amount of fish that's in there. Have you uh, seen it recently? Yeah, I went up. I used to go. I, I still do. You know, sometimes I'll I'll just go and if I'm like driving past or I have to escape the M25 and M4 to get home, I'll go like through Ivor and that, and I think, oh, I just go and have a ride round Farlows. And I went there probably about six months ago, photographed a 28 pound common for the guy there. And he was God, like, I bet oh he was God, shaft, I bet he was taking my photo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we saw, yeah, I mean, the tackle shop and everything that oh, they've got on there yeah. now as well. Is a, a, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's changed. Yeah, well, I, I took, I took um, uh, Robbie Fowler and Paul Merson in the first Harry's Heroes. We, we did a, a, a day's fishing <laughs> there, you know, and it was, it was so funny, you know, because like the, the crew, the, crew and production wouldn't tell me where we were going i'm like i need to know because i need to know what bait i need to know what tackle so i ended up like with this massive bag of like almost everything and um they say oh you're gonna follow us i'm like oh my god why don't you tell me <laughs> <laughs> Piece of boy, no. and we went there and obviously we didn't catch a thing you know like paul and uh, and robbie were like casting out and turning the blooming lake into a froth do and, they uh, fish then or are they no no, Robbie's Robbie's done it a little bit before when we used to go on England trips, but um, Merce was like just having none of it. The best, the best. I don't know whether you, well people will remember it, but he goes to sit down on one of my chairs and it's not set properly and it just goes straight back. <laughs> it wasn't deliberately, it wasn't set up. It was so funny, and he just lost it. And he's like, oh. Fuck. But you watch that tape. Yeah, I've se I have seen some of it. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you know we've had it on at home? I've not. I've not. I've not watched yeah. it. No. no, it is a good. Oh, laugh. It's it's a good laugh, but it's you know it's it's me at you know I'm 57 now. I was 57 <laughs> last weekend, and you know at that and getting your top off on cameras. Mm. Do you like, still feel like you're the mentor to everyone a little bit? Is that your sort of role? Calm everyone down and keep everyone yeah, on. The just I, if I'm honest, I don't. I don't like. Getting, I don't like getting involved in all that other business stuff. You know, I, I just, I'll, I'll go on there and I'll be me. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I like, you know, and a lot of the lads were going on there being themselves and then people just started to mix and gel together, you know, with different stories and different problems and that's what it turned into, more of a, a men's health issue program rather than the Was football. it Razor Ruddock, wasn't it? That yeah. Was, it, it had a... It had, you Razor know, he had a, a weight problem, a weight and, a, problem and a heart problem. Yeah. Um, Merce came back, came out with his gambling again. Mm. Um, you know, which was sad. You know, because I saw it at the beginning in '94, but that weren't the beginning. That was like the end of it when he came out. You know, and then for him to do it 
so many years later you know it was hard it was it was and it was a shock mm. you know especially to me um you know but it helps it mm. helps to chat you know and you know we, we had lots of chats and it was and people found people really enjoyed the program you know mm. it, it got you know great reviews do you think those guys needed to be in that kind of environment where they they they, they were around a like group like-minded group of people that could you know sort of relate to them and uh, i think so yeah, yeah. especially you know, when you retire from football and you're, you you sort of lose all of that well yeah you know and you you don't you don't lose everything but a lot of things change yeah you know you're getting everything done for you you know and then all of a sudden you retire and you've got you go away you're like what do i do now <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like there's nobody giving my passport <laughs> to the estuary you know, <laughs> to wherever you know like yeah. it's like you have to do everything yourself you know and, it, and, it, and it's a little bit of a shock but you, know, you you get used to it. I was looking forward to retirement. You know, I was I was ready for Did it. Did you have it planned what you were going to do when you retired then? Not really. No. no. I just knew it meant more time for fishing and more time for golfing. Yeah. You know, and other things developed. You know, I, I love my bike riding now. And, you know, so it's just, yeah. But even then, I still don't seem to have enough time to do what I like doing the most, which is, which is my fishing and golf. Somebody asked me the other day, and I was on the golf course, and they went, if you had one sport to choose, fishing or golf, what would you choose? Mm. And I was like, ooh. Mm. And I took a little bit of time and I was just fishing. Mm. Yeah, I would much rather go fishing than golfing. Yeah, I was saying David as well. I think whenever I've gone off and done something else far removed from fishing, I'm always thinking about, you know, when I get back, I'll go fishing. Yeah. We were talking about the Himalayas before and actually mm. I remember on that trip, it was like, and I remember talking to the people there and saying, when I get back, I'm going to start doing some fishing again. Yeah. It's just, it's like that comfort blanket, yeah, I think, isn't it? It is. It's definitely that. You know, it's something, it's it's somewhere where you know is great. You know, even if you're not catching, it's still great just to be out there, be outdoors, in, you know, in, in the countryside and watching wildlife. And what, what about sitting back? I mean, so you've retired from, from, you know, the highest level of football. I mean, do you sit back and reminisce over your football career and think, oh, it's not the same now? Or of course I do. do <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, people say to me, oh, do you miss it? And I can, and I reply straight away, I got not, not a single bit, you know, and I don't. I've, I've been there, I've done it, you know, I've won stuff, I've lost stuff, I've made mistakes. I've seen it all and now it's nice to watch football developing into a, a different game than when I was playing. You know, and it's a lot faster now. Um, it's a lot more athletic. Um, the balls are always constantly changing. We always used to be moaning about that they were getting lighter and moving and swerving all over the place. And it's, and it's just getting worse and worse now for the goalies. So I'm glad I'm retired. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I like, I like to watch it. I don't stay in to watch it. I've, I've always been a Leeds fan. I'm so excited that Leeds are now in the Premier League. They look good as well, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. And you were a bit disappointed because you, uh, you, you grew up as a Leeds uh, schoolboy player, didn't you? And, but you, yeah. you never got, you never got offered. Yeah, so I signed, I signed for Leeds when I was 16. I had the choice of being, um, of going to Leeds United or Yorkshire Cricket Club as a fast bowler. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's right. So my, uh, my head teacher at my comprehensive school in Rotherham is called Kimworth Comprehensive. Um, he was an ex-cricketer, and he was like, you've got to go to Yorkshire, you've got to go to Yorkshire. And my PE teacher was an ex-Barnsley footballer, and he's like, no, get yourself to Leeds. He says, you're much better at football than you are at cricket. <laughs> was there a lot more money in football than, than cricket? Yeah. What was that, about 80, early 80s? That would be, yeah, 82, something like yeah. that, yeah. What yeah, did you 80. sign? What was your signing on fee? You're joking, are you? I remember signing twelve pound a week and a free bus <laughs> pass as an apprentice. That was it. Look where you and came. Free, and three digs though. <laughs> was it? Oh, yeah, well, that's right. Three digs, and yeah. then I, that was till I was eighteen, and then I went back. I lived with my mum and dad for a year, and then I got released by Leeds at nineteen. And I was devastated, mm. you know, and I I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, when you get told by one of your heroes, because Eddie Gray was the manager at the time, and he said, "Look." you're really young, you know, we're, we're not going to take it any further. We want to get an experienced goalkeeper. And John Luke at the time was the Leeds goalkeeper. Mm. <laughs> Little did I know I'd be nicking his job at yeah, Arsenal right, later yeah, on. Yeah. Um, you know, so I ended up being at 19 thinking, what am I going to do? You know, and I used to, my mum and dad owned a, a grocery stroke sandwich shop, you know, so I would do like the del bread deliveries for the, for the, the bread man. And I was thinking, well, is that what I'm going to do now? You know, luckily within a, about a week, I got a call and you know and, and Peterborough came in for me and and I said to me I went down where's Peterborough <laughs> <laughs> what sort of an outfield player were you um 
I was all right, but I always knew I was better in goal. Mm. You know, I used to play out because a lot of the teams that I played in at school and that we were quite good. So I would like literally touch the ball like two or three times a game, you know, and I'd be freezing, you know. So I'd be like, can I just come out for half an hour or something just to run around? And I used to like, I used to play striker. I also, I also liked being a, a centre half as well. And then one of the, I remember playing in a game for my local Sunday team and there was a scout watching and he went, oh, I, w- I wouldn't mind taking your centre off. And our manager went, it's all right. He's going to Leeds next week. He's a goalkeeper. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, so it could have been quite a lot different then, potentially. Yeah, but no, I, I, I love being in goal. Yeah. Yeah. Were well, you just a natural goalkeeper straight away? I was tall. I was tall at school. And, you know, even going from infants to junior school, you know, watching the big boys play. And then they'd, um, I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to be able to go into their player ground and and so you go over and like, oh, can we play? Can we play? And they're like, okay, you're told you go in goal. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. Yeah. And then the big boys start praising you when you're catching it or saving it and things. And that's where it developed from. And you were saying before about just confidence is such a key for that, mm. you know. And um, do you find growing up as well and gaining that confidence, you know, at a low level, but it, it just stays with you into your career. It's so important. It, it to- does. You know, getting, getting praise really helps, you know, and especially when it's, you know, when you're that young, you're getting praise from the big boys, I used to call them. Um, you know, it, it, it does great. It does wonders for you. You um, find that you're a confident, more confident yeah, person. you know, but if you start getting stick, I would imagine that that can, that can really um, affect you. But uh, yeah, it's just... It works both ways, doesn't it? I mean, if you're at school and you're, not, and you're small and you're not very good at sport, you can, you can develop and, and become better at sport when you're older, but you still hold those memories yeah. of what it was like. Yeah. You know, back in those. Yeah, yeah I was so I was were. lucky because I, you know, I was taught I was I was athletic. I, I I played cricket, I played football, and I played basketball for my for my town for Rotherham. Mm. You know, so I was you know I used to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. That's, that's all we used to do sport. back then. There was yeah. no no yeah. you know Xboxes and stuff like that. You know, so we were out. We were out doing sports and everything. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We had Bobby on the show as well. Did you? If you I'd watched that. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I mean, he's super keen as well on oh, his fishing. No, I, I mean, you can't. You can't. I didn't realise it. And I met him a couple of times, and I met him at um, it was at Ali's birthday once, and uh, you know, and he was saying that he's going to Croatia the next day. I was like, whoa, you know. Then I realised how how well into it he is, you know. And I right, didn't know how keen he fish as well, didn't he? Good forty pound yeah. fish, oh, and, and incor- yeah, sixty pound cart, wasn't it? Yeah, incor- it was. Yeah, was yeah. It? I think yeah. that's the picture I left us on the table. Isn't yeah. it? actually, we got the picture there. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, there's one there. God. And and Bobby's a big lad and all, isn't yeah, he? Well, that was the thing you <laughs> say. <laughs> you, makes you, you look tiny. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're you're a big guy, but actually, I was surprised how big Bobby was for yeah. a striker. As tall, know. yeah, he's a tall guy, isn't he? Athletic guy, yeah. Still, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he's still massive. Isn't yeah. He? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, um, and and the two of you actually, because you mentioned Foxmere, didn't you? Yeah. You fished there. Uh, I did a lot of fishing up there because um, at the time I was getting all, all my fishing gear off Fox. Um, my mate Steve Tasker was there, and um, Max Cottis was up there. I'd go and fish with Max. <laughs> I've never seen an angler more organised. I've heard than Max. this. I've oh heard my! This. His tattle box was immaculate. Mm. I felt like going and just scruffing it up a bit. But Have you watched the Kevin Ellis videos on no. YouTube? Oh, you want to no. see him? I mean, his, his kit is. It's worse than your dad. I was in that bad. It, is, it <laughs> really is. It's so. Is it? But it, I mean. Yeah. So, so but I, yeah, like, but with Foxmere, I've, I've been on there like lots, and I remember I, yeah, I even took uh, Chris Tarrant up there. Oh yeah. And um, it was so funny because at Foxmere you could use bait boats, and and I, I got my bait boat, and he's like, "That's not fishing. That's no, oh, that's cheating and everything." And about. Four twenties later, he was like, "Take one of my baits out to that island." <laughs> it was brilliant. He's never it been was. the same since. No, and he, and he and I took it out and dropped it off. Ten minutes later, off it went. You know, so it was it was funny. And then I remember one one other trip as well that we we went up there and and I was looking at his gear and it was like so messy. You know, like totally opposite to Max. Yeah. And uh, and his his one of his cart rods. I'm sure he had at least three lines on it. So he had he had like mono, then he had brain, yeah, right. and then mono. The back in line. Oh. It. <laughs> <laughs> and and he anyway, he's got he's got it out, and next thing it, it goes off, and it's a big fish, and it like went down this little channel, and so he's like hold the, hold the rod, and because he had snagged up, and he went hold the rod. So I'm holding the rod in his swim. He went round this little bay, and then starts hand lining it back. You like pulling it, pulling it. I'm keeping a tight line. <laughs> next thing, all I heard was Chris go, it's a 
catfish <laughs> and it was a big catfish yeah, yeah. and he and he so as it came past him it went it shot out into the open lake and he ran back round and he grabbed the rod off me and he got it in and, and it bottomed my scales out at 60 pound and you reckon it was the, an 80 pounder yeah the guys reckoned it was about 80 wow yeah. were there many catfish in there there was a few yeah, yeah. i had a 36 out of there that's my be- that's my best catfish you um, like catching those yeah i did yeah i just i just like i just like feeling the power you know, of whatever, and, and the catfish have got real power. Yeah, yeah. You know, they've got surprise. You know, when you're used to cart fishing, and you know, you know how, what they what they feel like, and you can tell whether it's a good one or not. And then, when you get a catfish, like the speed of it, it's just like whoa! You, and you know straight away, more well, almost straight away, there it is a catfish because it's just so. I've fast. never caught one. Really? Mm. Well, that's something I've caught that you haven't had time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> yep. Go He's got one off on me there for sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, but then, but Foxmere was a, a great place to learn. And that's still where I've had, that's where I got my biggest carp today, which is 36.8. Oh, um, I know. Still like that at 40. You know, so I'd, so I'd, back I'd, then you were just fishing for carp, were you? Yeah. That was, you were yeah, just carp. Totally fishing. carp. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, you know, sometimes even even in the winter, I would still go up there. I remember once going up there and <laughs> with, with the bait boat and everything, and I'd got all the gear. So I'd got, like, the solar panels, and I'd got <laughs> the plug-in chargers for me, and, and I'd got a Range Rover. That was, uh, that was back in the day when I was sponsored by Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've got all, all my batteries recharging from the car and everything, and, and you know what's coming, yeah. don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> End of the day, I pack up. And and what had, what had happened is I'd, I'd followed, I can't remember who it was, but I followed, it might have been Max or somebody, to the lake. So I took no notice of where I was going. And then and I get and then I get to the car and absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. So then I'm phoning, I'm like phoning the uh, recovery team. They're like, where are you? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> In the end, I don't know how, how we worked it out, but anyway, they, they came out and they just gave me a jump start and that was it. I thought you said that Max might have had a, f- a few spare batteries on him as well. Uh, for yeah, a Range no, Rover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But um, no, it was, yeah, so I, I totally drained the Range Rover out of power. <laughs> Never happened again. <laughs> and when, when did you catch the 36 then? How long ago was that? Oh, that would be, I bet about, 96-ish, 97. Oh, right. Yeah, so it's a long time ago. I've not done as much carping up to date. You said you've been on a bit of a I've carping been, sabbatical. Yeah, I just, I like, you know, so like, I love watching the YouTube videos, you know, of carp, you know, of, of you know, the quarter lads and everything and all of it. And, you know, even now I'm getting into the guru stuff and the match fishing, but just love watching it. And then I'm like, right, I don't, because uh, I've got ways in, which is quite close mm. to where I live. Mm. And, um, I go out on my bike, and then at the end of it, I'll, I'll go over there, and then I'll, I'll ride around the, the lakes and have a look. And then, I, you know, so I'm, it's, it's coming back. It's definitely it? coming back, yeah. But, you know, since then, though, I've fished a lot on the rivers, and i fished mainly for carp on, on the Thames. Yeah, because you said you, you had a house in Marlow, and now you've moved down, yeah. down onto the, on, a, on the a, Thames, and now down into Reading, yeah. K- Kennet. Yeah, but I had a, we had a townhouse. Mm right on the Thames and it had got um it had got a private mooring so I, you know and I found out that I could fish and I was like yes so it, and there was there was boats all, always parked it's dead opposite Higgins Park is where, where Terry's been doing a yeah. lot of his fishing and um I was just putting bait in you know like piling this bait in I was watching I watched a carp take my bait looked at my at my my rods like which were like 30 yards up the up the the mooring nothing's happened no noise, no nothing. Yeah. I'm like, this carp's going, mm. you know, and it was just, it was such a, like a learning thing, you know, where they, they can actually pick your bait up and shake and everything and nothing happens at the end of at the rod. Surprising how far they can go, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. we but would, yeah. Caught, a, excuse me, caught, I had four different 30 pounders in one awesome. season there. My wow. dad had a 32 pound common. I, mean, I was doing a charity gig. And um, me, and my, me and my wife, Frankie, had gone into London. And I said to my dad, like, messing about, I said, oh, just send us some photos, you know, of the fish you catch. <laughs> Next thing, <laughs> really? his picture That's comes through, a 30 odd pound common carp, and he's holding it like, oh. <laughs> Did you know. he do a lot of fishing? Um, he does a bit now. Yeah. He's done, you know, and he, obviously he comes down, and we used to, um, well, we still do. We didn't do it this year, though, because of COVID. Um, so July the 5th, uh, June the 15th, 
we we get everything set up for 12 o'clock so as soon as it hits 12 o'clock we've got two glasses of champagne <laughs> oh, oh, two glasses a bottle of champagne unopened and as soon as it hits 12 o'clock i'll fire the champagne into the into the river squirt a bit into the river drink some and then we fish for about an hour that's and, great uh, isn't yeah it? and it is it, it's we've done it for quite a few years now and because we've, we've lived on the river for nine years now so um, did you um did you always inter- did you know when you moved to marlow how good a stretch of river that was fishing wise no i didn't at right. all you know so it was i knew that there was i'd seen the odd um like carp fishermen there doing like the odd one-nighters and stuff and then there's also a uh, the complete angler there's a there's a massive weir there so i've I've now got a ticket for that but that's yeah that's another story but that's, that's really hard at the moment but um but i knew i didn't know what was up river and at the time I, I i was just you know just putting the rigs out you know basic rigs with boilies and things and catching bream oh my god there's like so many bream in there mm. and i <laughs> i remember putting on because i was getting fed up with the bream I put on two 21 mil pellets, right, and I caught a tench. <laughs> <laughs> Change the species. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was, but with these carp, when these carp started feeding, you know, like my first bite, I hooked a good carp and, doo, 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 and then, it, then it fell off. And I was like, whoa, what was that? And then like half an hour later, my first fish that I caught was a 30 pounder. Of course it. I know. And I was like, oh my God, I never knew they were this big yeah and then you've got no idea what you're going to catch then do you yeah you know and it just there was there was a lot of fish in there you know i know i said i got like four different 30s but there were a lot of backup fish that were like 25 26 yeah some nice fish probably the best section of river in the country isn't it i know and and little did i know that at that time that there was a 50 pounder swimming around in there as well I, ho- I hooked a catfish in there as well. Did you? I had it on for half an hour. I had a, o- an audience behind me watching it. Half an hour, it went down the river, back up the river, down the river, and then the hook pulled. Oh. was <laughs> 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 devastated. Wow, but it just goes to show what you can catch in that river. Yeah. And, you know, those fish have probably come out of some of those lakes further downstream as yeah. well. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a mystery as well, isn't it? It is. Did you always fish in your garden or did you, did you wander down the, you know, fish everywhere along that stretch? Um... Fished out on on the complete angler, you know, that ran the back of the hotel. Yeah. Uh, fished there. Didn't really go up because I knew that up river at Temple at Temple Lock, mm. the um, the gatekeeper there, he went, Dave, come come and have a look at this, and he took me like round the back to where they where their sluice gates are, you know, you can walk like right above them, and I've I've there was like so many big carp in the fresh, you know, the boiling water and like. How many? I would say at least thirty, right? Big ones and all. But then all of a sudden, one big one. This was before I knew there was a fifty in there. And this big one, I couldn't believe what it was doing. It was acting like a little young fish. It was like just swimming around, and you know where the water like really piles into the main river. It was just swimming straight into it, side on, and then like almost like surfing away. You know, and, and what do you think it was doing? I've no idea. Like it oxygen. just seemed to be enjoying itself. Yeah, just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No other reason, really. And then, so then, seeing them, knowing that they were in this this stretch that was like what I was fishing, um, and then there was also like a little. There's a temple marina, and I went in there and saw some good carp in there as well. But you couldn't fish it, you know. But so, it, so just, they were when we were seeing fish there. They they were in shoals. Do you think they were in shoals a lot of the time like that yeah, as well? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. could you have walked a long way at the river and not seen any carp? Do you think that was the majority of the? Yeah, it was like it was almost like either end. Yeah, you know, without I didn't really see much in the middle. You know, and I'd go out in the boats. You know, there was like these little boats that you could hire for like an hour or something like that. Yeah, you know, and I'd get the Polaroids on and yeah, hat but, yeah. on and then start going up and down the river and, but didn't see a lot. But always saw them down. So where the park is, there's a there's an area where a lot of people feed the ducks, and it's quite deep. It's probably about eight or nine foot you know and these people were like chucking all loads of bread in and i got my glasses on and all of a sudden i was like whoa and i could see these dark shapes underneath <laughs> they were like just get waiting for the bits of bread to come down and it would carp wow is that yeah. where terry was felt that yeah. that's where we that's where he's um yeah where it, it you actually see him putting a fish back laying down on the bank there where, where the people are feeding the yeah i the, watched that the ducks and stuff was there anywhere in particular that they did favor that you could always kind of think and generally boats, speaking on around the boats yeah you know that's where i used to just drop you know drop the bait in and they'd and 
I remember seeing it the first time. I put a, quite a bit of bait in. And then the next morning I went there and there was this massive clear patch where they cleared the weed and the gravel was just perfect, you know, and you're thinking, go on, just, right, just drop a little bait on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about heavy baiting? Did that make a difference on that? It did, but you have to be careful because of the bream. You know, once they came, there was like hundreds of them. Would you get the carp at the back end of the bream or would they just completely uh, take over everything? I was lucky. The, the, the carp, I used to get like early evenings, you know, and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't fish the nights, you know, and because you would start getting the bream. But then, and luckily a lot of the carp came in the daylight, you know, and, and I've got like photos on my phone where it's, it's daylight where I'm getting them. Yeah. You know, so that's, you know, even my dad, you know, he, he got his one in daylight as well. Yeah. My daughter at the time, she was only about, I mean, 11 or 12 and she actually landed the fish for him. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. What about, for, so did you know that there was a 50 pounder along that stretch? No, I didn't find out until later when, you know, when Terry was talking about it and I think, it came out in the angling in in some of the angling press that um, is it Nick Hellier? He's Nick Stone actually. He can yeah. tell that story. Oh, is he? Yeah, <laughs> he, he was there with this one. I was like, it's from the ten, but I didn't know where it was from, you know. And then I found out that it was that one. It wasn't just the size of it though, was it? It was no, the fucking just, look of it yeah. as well, wasn't it? I mean, it's like the but best all, looking cup. Yeah, but all the fish that I've got, you know, that, that I caught, they're like great condition, you know. And, and then I spoke to Terry. Uh, recently and about mm. you know when I watched him with doing his program and he and I sent him some of the pictures of my fish and he's like oh yeah that one's down by Maidenhead now that one <laughs> it's like what he knows where they all are yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they're still knocking around are they are they putting on weight then do you think along there or <sighs> I don't know I don't I don't know how much how much food's going in there mm. you know like that's put in by anglers but I guess there was a lot of fishing on there until obviously that one that one died last year wasn't yeah. it so yeah but that that the, the whole area was getting quite a lot of attention yeah. I'd imagine. you know and then even like at the complete angler you know I've, I've fished that for barbel yeah you know but that's like really tailed off now and they're not they're not getting as many mm. um you know which is surprising and it's very similar to what's happening on the kennet you know when when i first went there the barbel that were there with i could put a handful of pellet in there there'd be like 20 or 30 barbel there within two or three minutes you know some decent fish and like do it now then you get like one or two if you're lucky are they yeah. still around they're around in little little pods i think um you know but the the, the hardest thing at the moment is is the crayfish mm. you know that you you leave your bait out for more than 45 minutes mm. and, it, and it's it's done have you found a way of getting rid of those or, or trying to combat that not really you know because I've, I've even put um, fake corn on and they still go for that as well mm. you know and it's just it's annoying but you know you, you get you know you know what I saw the other day which is really weird I saw mallards eating crayfish mm. they were swimming around obviously they disturbed one and then all of a sudden they just one of them grabbed it and then about three or four of them started pulling bits of it off mm. and they were all like there was a like big commotion and I was like what is going on? It weren't until I properly looked that I realised what was going on, and they were eating a crayfish. Mm. So mm. you should. Uh, uh, Ian Russell done a podcast with us, and he talks quite a lot about crayfish actually, yeah. and um, you know, fishing for him. It was quite interesting what he was saying. You putting nets in the water and kind of this odour in the water, but it's a little bit different on a river because you've got a flowing river, which yeah. it probably doesn't have the same. You know, one minute there's a load of crayfish there, and the next minute they can be turned off and they've just disappeared in. In uh, in no yeah. time, well, at least um, they disappear from my bit. <laughs> yeah, have they always been there then? So this yeah. is where you're living on the Kenya yeah, now. Th yeah, they've always been there, um, and there just seems to be more of them now. You know, I'm actually catching them on. You know, even if I use a little swim feeder with maggot, you're getting them on double maggot and stuff. And you know, they're they're eating everything that I'm putting out there. So it's it's just so hard at the moment. I mean, yeah. on a still water, it's literally just bait the granny out of it and yeah. just try and feed. It's keeping feed in the water and waiting for, yeah. for fish to come along. But yeah. it's, um, yeah. Do you know what sort of uh, crayfish they are? They do signals. They're the red signals. Oh, yeah, they? Yeah. 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 They are a pain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so where you are now on the Kennet then? So back up at Marlow, there was, it was more predominantly sort of river carp fishing. More. It was, yeah, yeah, it was like carbling, I call it, you know, because yeah. you use exactly the same rigs mm. as you do for Carbling? For car yeah. Did you, you know. invent that term? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I heard somebody say it, but it's just, it's exactly the same. And you, you put your rods out with the bleepers, you've got nearly the same rigs on, Yeah. Um, you know, and you're using boilies and stuff, you know, yeah. so... 
you know it weren't until you know even like now on the Kennet you know I've gone I get um get you know even the like rock hard baits you know from hinders and stuff like that you know but they uh, and I even dry them out mm. you know put them in me uh in me boiler room and dry them rot you know like and then I, and then drill through them but they're still getting them off and not getting them off but they're still like they, they whittle they're whittling them down. them down yeah 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 and you said what on the, on the entire stretch of that river where you are on on the main parts yeah you know my my dad caught one and i could it, it was almost like a lobster yeah it was that big you God know blimey. Yeah, you know so it's yeah it's a it's a it's a battle that hopefully will what about the barbel fishing along there it's it's good you know it's okay um and then the ea recently put um or well, the Rivers Authority put in um, quite a few little ones in as well. So, you know, they put in about 400 little, you know, like 12, 16 inch barbels. Mm. So, you know, that'd be interesting to yeah, see, that's see good, what they Because you never catch, I've, I've never catch little barbel. Mm. It's, it's either like a seven or eight pounder or a bit bigger. Yeah, but you never get the little ones. And I'm like, well, where do they go? Because they obviously spawn. I've seen them spawning. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. But like, but you catch like little. Like little roach or little chub, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chub but, but, but like you say, barbel are always a few pound, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. What's <laughs> the biggest barbel you've had along there? On on the Kennet is thirteen six, I think. Yeah, thirteen six, and then my biggest is fourteen eight off the Thames. Wow. At um, oh, what's it called now? Oh, I forgot the name of it. The bridge. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah, I remember. It, come, it will come yeah, back. It come always back, does, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, but yeah, that, that was through Andy. Andy Little, he, he told me about these these fish that were in there, and we were fishing Walton Bridge, right. just up river of Walton Bridge, and um, he took me there for the first time, and we were fishing, and we didn't we didn't really get anything. Then all of a sudden, whoosh, off off it went the three foot twitch, as they call it, and um, yeah, and it, and it was a, a barbel. And then I used to I used to go at night time, you know, and that's that's where I started doing a lot of the river fishing on there, and. Um, yeah, I had a, had a fourteen eight barbel. That's a that's a mad. I'd love yeah. to catch. We went. Uh, I went with Rooney actually a few weeks, uh, for a couple of months ago to the Y, yeah. and just done a little bit on there. And they're, they're smaller barbel there, but it's still, it's still great fun. Yeah. That is. Well, I, I went there with Ali, you know, and Dean doing the big fish off. I reckon you might yeah. have gone to what was it? Ali's hole. Is it Ali's hole that we called it? There, oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a name. Why, is that somewhere where they'd like to put him? I don't know, that's a bit of an, end, that's a bit of an innuendo, that is as well, isn't it? <laughs> there was a little spot there. I, I, it might have been when you went along with him. That we, uh, it was a bit of an island in the middle of the river. Right. And the, and the, the river run from like both directions, like as if you're on an island, and yeah. then it flowed under this tree. I don't know if you were oh, on that stretch no, or not. Didn't, no, no. I put uh, Simmons Yacht, that sort of area. Yeah, well, that's where that's where we went because we went and uh, I think it was one of the first ones that they did of the, um, the the big fish off. And I remember we got there, and we were fishing for grayling, and um, that was the day's challenge. And it was like the river started coming up; it had been raining, so it started getting coloured and coming up. And there's like there's four of us there fishing, and um, and camera crew, and you're supposed to be like trying to catch these little grayling and that. And in the end, it got so bad that we ended up putting swim feeders on <laughs> you'll see on the program we put this and i catch the first grain i didn't even know it was on <laughs> right so i lift the rod up like that and i'm like oh there's something <laughs> oh, it's only a little one and it's only it's a little grayling and that, that won the day <laughs> <Did it? laughs> yeah brilliant <laughs> and then we did then we pike fished the next day and um and tom lost one and then um the next day was barbel fishing you know and i'd got ali as my my team member and um and we we got quite a few we got i got a quarter nine pounder so it was that's it was pretty good. Big. i mean it is it's, it's getting good, through yeah the they say it's good for the uh for this for the river for yeah the river yeah wide. definitely yeah yeah you mentioned andy little actually actually the first time i saw you doing any fishing stuff was probably oh my god that's got to be 30, I know when 30, that was. Yeah. it's got to be 30 years ago yeah 1990 it was yeah and it was called gravel pit carpet yeah and i was it, it, do you know how I know like when it is? Is because I know what car I had. 
at that Colin. time. What, what car was it? I think it was a Cosworth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a decent motor at yeah. the time, though, wasn't oh, it? Oh yeah, it was. It was rapid, yeah. and um, yeah, because I had all my carp gear in the Cosworth. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> but but like the shark thing on the back of it as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we had, um, but I had to when we were doing that because that was, I think that was about three days. But I had to go back to train, and then I would. So I'd go back to Arsenal, train, and then go straight back out to Huddersfield. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, so it was... Uh, but that was good because that learned, that taught me about surface fishing for carp. You know, Andy, Andy showed me, you know, and I was like, oh, dog biscuits, what? Yeah. You know, and, you know, all that sort of thing. So mm. it was um, it was good. We, we caught some decent fish as well. I think we had them up to about 26. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I know. I remember. You were sat there eating a packet of crisps or something. And it's like, he's supposed to be the Arsenal goalkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Venger weren't pleased Food of that. champions. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? Oh, yeah. He was a good guy to learn from, wasn't he? Andy was unreal. Um, Do you still see him? Do you hear from him very much nowadays? A little bit. I know he's he's not been very well recently, but hopefully he'll, he'll be okay. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, I've seen him a couple of times. I've not fished with him for ages, you know, but I've, I've fished with him lots. I remember it, it just seemed to have this knack of catching big Everyone fish. Everyone says that, don't they? You know, him. You know and, and I went and I took him to, I was I was living at, near Rickmansworth and I took him to Croxley Hall and it was before it became the ace cart water it is now. But but um, Paul, he, he told me that, you know, we can go and fish it before it actually turns into this cart water that they were doing. And so we went there we, and, I'd, and I used to fly fish here and I knew there was some big carp in there because I'd seen them like whizzing around and so we, we go there and, and the, his first trip he caught the biggest fish in the lake <laughs> his first trip yeah. you know, and it was a day it was in a day it wasn't even like a night session or anything like that it was and I'm like and then even I fished with him um, what's weird is I fished with Andy Nick Hancock and me on opening day of the season a long time ago on the River Kennet and it's exactly where Bought the house. It was it. <laughs> it's like so spooky. Yeah. But even then, on that day, it was really hard. We had a we had a few barbel. We we're fishing like into a weir pool, like the bo- boiling everywhere, and um and then it just stopped. And then Andy's like, he says, oh, "I'm gonna have a go for the chub." And I'm thinking, well, what, what's different? <laughs> and and he and he he <laughs> chucked his bait out near this near this wall, and I'm like, and I'm looking at his rod. And I'm thinking, nothing happening, nothing happening. And all of a sudden, he's right. He, stri- he strikes into one. I'm like, I didn't even see that move. Didn't you? And he went, yeah, it did. It just did a little twitch. And he got like, he had a six pound chub, like like that. And what did he do differently? Did you, did you ever find out? Or no, because just, like I look, I when I first started fishing with him, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to tell me about these ace rigs yeah. that he's got and everything. And it's not. Yeah. It's just plain basic rigs. But he says, as he always said, it's where you put them. It's having you know, a sixth sense, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and he just seemed to know, you know, like he used to read the river really well, mm. you know, or know where, where the fish would be at, at certain times. And mm. yeah. You said you filmed that on Homersfield as well in Norfolk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did was... you ever go back there? Did you fish there very often? John no. Wilson done a bit on there, didn't he? I actually fished in John Wilson's garden, you know. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. So John. You've been around I a bit. Know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm 57, I'm old. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I know, so John Wilson's brother, Dave, used to live in Waltham Abbey, where I used to live, and he was my barber, <laughs> right? I didn't know at the time, Nick, so oh, I'm John Wilson's brother, <laughs> yeah, of course you are. And anyway, he was, and he was like, <laughs> 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 and and we went up, and we went and fished, and it was, you know, but we caught, I don't know whether you've, you've seen the, the late, or the... Yeah, the lake scene is garden. There's all like little bays yeah. and lily pads and everything. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, yeah. you know, stalking areas, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. You know, and, and that's what we well, that's what we did. We we caught a few carp, but nothing massive. But yeah, yeah, yeah. he did all right for himself, didn't he? In oh, the end, with that, he was brilliant, though, weren't he? At this, yeah, you know, at what he did. I think Hummersfield has turned into. I, I said to you yesterday that it's turned. It's a. It's, maybe I shouldn't say this on the podcast, but there's some big <laughs> specimen fishing there. Oh, and, there? Uh, I mean, it's yeah. a syndicate and stuff nowadays right. as well. But uh, um, yeah, it's just a it's it's a well manicured, you know, top yeah. specimen water. Now, but it's like that, it's, like with Croxley, like I said to you before, when it was a trout lake, and then they started like sorting out the, the carp. You yeah. know, anything un, uh, under a certain weight went into one of the other lakes, and not. And now there's like there's I think there's two fifties in there. Mm, those big commons oh. and a big mirror as well, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, what? you know, so it was. It, it's it's good to see that you can, 
you can get hold of a lake and then turn it into a really good one. Yeah, because when you turn up there, um, I've only fished there as a guest, uh, but when you turn up there, you kind of book in like on a on a uh, TV screen yeah. thing. You book in on that. Uh, the lodge. Like, yeah, the yeah. lodge. And you can kind of see that it's like an old trout fishery, can't you? Yeah. But um, um, yeah, how it's sort of developed into a carp, into a carp yeah. water. Um, it's funny how a sports people and actors seem to sort of end up fishing that lake as well, isn't it? There's a, there's a few people on there, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, I know. I know Adrian yeah. last week um, on our last podcast. He, oh, right. he fished he there. Was there yeah. He's quite local. Yeah. And, uh, it was funny because when, when I retired, because I've, I've been going there, you know, yeah. in and out of, you know, like trout fishing and you know, carp fishing and got to know Paul and uh, really well and Philo. And it was um, when I retired, I'll never forget, they, they, put, they gave me a car parking space like around the back of the lodge and he put this plaque up and he went, ex goal is car parking <laughs> space. It was brilliant. I was like, yes. <laughs> Did you get that very often? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get you get a few perks. <laughs> Maybe at the Emirates and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't go that much though, if I'm honest. Right. You know, I probably go two or three times a season. Mm. Um, and my friend uh, Paul White, he's got some really nice tickets in the Diamond Club, and that's the way to watch football. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, you can turn up in your jeans or whatever, and you just go and, and it's really nice. What's the perspective like watching it from the terrace? You know, compared to um, being out there. You, you just you're constantly like thinking of you know even like on on a match day on a Saturday, and I'll be at home and I know that like Arsenal are playing at three o'clock and I'll be thinking, yeah, at eleven o'clock they'll be doing their stretching routine, <laughs> you know, at eleven thirty they'll be having their massive meals and then then they go back to their to their rooms to rest and have a massage and then they, they'll arrive at the Emirates about half one, you know, so I, it's all that routine starts Very coming regimented, back, yeah, and then they yeah. have to go out and play and it's. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a great life, but there's there's a lot of sacrifice. It's, uh, you were talking a bit about it earlier. When um, how do you find it now when you watch other keepers perhaps make mistakes and stuff like yeah. that? What's that like for you to see them kind of uh, kind of go through it? Well, it's 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 what it is. It's you know, I've got memories of that. You yeah. know, and I look I look to see how they react. I look to see how they recover from making a mistake because that that tells you how good a goalkeeper they're going to be because goalkeepers make mistakes there's a lot of goalkeepers are remembered for mistakes there's there's not many that are remembered mm. for saves luckily i'm remembered for both <laughs> <laughs> i've got to um... made a decent <laughs> bit of a save against <laughs> she against sheffield united although I, I don't talk about it too much in our house because my wife frank is a sheffield united fan so. oh, is she? <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's every now and again you go yeah. <laughs> well the, the other one i was because i wanted to ask you about shaves a big but... arsenal fan by the way <laughs> all right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but the other, st well, it well, it wasn't a save. But the other moment I've got to ask you about was um, what happened with Ronaldinho and that free kick. Right, time to go. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you been asked? arrived? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, sorry, I had to ask. Yeah, but yeah, but that, but that's that's part of me, you know, and that's part of what a lot of people rem remember me for, you know, because at that time, you know, I was a high-profile player. Um, I got a tash and ponytail to match as well, <laughs> you know. So it was, I was very noticeable. You put it all out, there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And um, yeah, and uh, people say to me, "Oh, did he mean it?" And I and I'd think, well, it doesn't matter because it still went in from about forty yards away, and that in my book is a goalkeeping error. Mm. Um, it, it was an error. Did he mean it? I found out straight after the game that he didn't, but it, it doesn't matter. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you know. Wow. So it's like, yeah. what's it like in the dressing room after that? I mean, who, who, what kind of players so, would come up to you after that and say, look, don't worry, Dave, it's all right. You but know? you know what's weird, Sam, is that like I was on the pitch and, and I broke down and I started crying, you know, because you, you walk up to the halfway line and then you see all the England fans and then you start thinking, oh God, I've let all them down. You know, then the emotions just get bigger and bigger. And then I started, you know, I burst into tears and I didn't remember at the time. It weren't until a few days later where I saw photographs that, Sven came up to me and said something. Dave Beckham was on my shoulder, you know, saying something in my ear. Ray Clemens was talking. Don't remember a word they said. Don't you? No. Mm. You know, I just remember thinking, you know, what what am I going to get treated like now? You know, it's 2002. I've been England's goalkeeper for a long time. Um, you know, and it weren't until I got back. I mean, David Beckham, would he turn around and say, don't worry, mate, it'll be fine. They're fat. Know, Everyone yeah. will be so <laughs> understanding. They'll you know, want to burn you and everything. Nothing, yeah, you've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> all, wow. yeah. But that's, that's what, I swear to you, that's what went through my mind yeah. while I was on the pitch. You know, that's after, terrible, I, after I've made that mistake and the game's still got half an hour to go, yeah, you know, the wow. ball's at the other end, obviously, and I'm thinking, oh no, you know, we've got half an hour to, I'm like thinking, come on, lads, get me out of this, like, like try and get an equaliser. 
Um, but it didn't happen. And I was thinking, like, so what sort of reception am I going to get mm. when I get back home? Luckily, when we arrived at Heathrow Airport as a, as a squad, you know, we, we were with all our family as well. You know, that there was a load of England fans and they started singing my name straight away. And it mm. was like, oh, you yeah, know, and it was Why a, do you think they reacted differently to you to Beckham then? Why? Jealousy, I think. People are jealous of him. Of David, yeah. 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 Because he's a good looking lad. He got everything, you know. Just want to see him. Yeah, you know. Screw he, up. His girlfriend was a spice girl yeah. and all that sort of thing. You know, it's, it's for me, it's typical British <laughs> mentality. <laughs> you know, we build people up there. We love knocking them down. Yeah. You know, Have you ever seen, um, you, you were talking about like, um, you know, the mentality kind of thing with football, uh, goalkeepers in particular. Have you ever seen a, a goalkeeper that's had a really weak mentality and be able to sort of turn that around um not necessarily naming people but um yeah it's, it's, it's not so easy goalkeep- is it no to, uh, i've seen goalkeepers that have that have made mistakes um and then not been able to recover in games um you know but i've not really seen you know where, where they've they've gone through like a little patch of like really bad after a mistake and then got better you know, it's 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 hard. You, you think know, it just has a, an all round effect on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, you know, but the 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 good goalkeepers can get on with it. Mm. You know, and you, and you can see straight away. You know, like people like even like De Gea at Man United. You know, mm. he, he's made a few mistakes, mm. but within that same game, he will make amazing saves Blind even saves, after he's made he? that mistake. Yeah. You know, so it just shows you that he can he can refocus. You know, and get on with his game. Mm-hmm. But, the one at the moment, Kepper at Chelsea, he's had a yeah. bit of a real hard time. But then, hasn't he? you know, the, the, so the pressure's on. Yeah, big you time. know, the pressure's on now with every save that you know, even the ball. You know, some some of his mistakes are like really bad technique, bad you know, mm. going under his arms and stuff like that. And um, so, it's like, well, what do you do? You know, it, but I've, I've always said you don't go chasing it. You know, just build it little bit by little bit, and it'll come back because. You don't become a bad goalkeeper overnight. Of course you know, not. They've been, he's been a good goalkeeper for a, quite a long time now. Yeah. You know, he's had his, mm. his, his moments, you know, like not wanting to come off the pitch and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> when, was he, quite when he was supposedly injured. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but you know. De Gea had a hard time before he even really got going with United, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I mean, it was all it was about his small, physique. He, was, he wasn't yeah. big enough. But that's, he, what, that's what happens a lot of the time when players come to the Premier League. They realise, you know, Patrick Vieira told us this, and like Nicholas Anelka, Thierry, Manu Petit, they were like, we can't believe how fast and physical the Premier League is, mm. you know, and, and it takes them a little while to get used to it. You mm. look at Pepe now at Arsenal, he's he's getting used to it. Yeah. All right, he's not playing as much as what he, he would hope to, you know, at the start of this season, but um, he, he's getting used to it. But it's it, it can be tough. But mm. even even Henri took, you know, he, he didn't come over and that was it, it oh, was no. him straight away, was no. it? It took you, some real when, time. I, I saw Nicholas and Elka come, and he was a much better player at the same age as Thierry. Was he? he yeah. Was such a good player. So fast. He was so <laughs> fast, but in training as well. You know, I remember seeing Steve Bold and Tony Adams trying to <laughs> kick him <laughs> because he was always getting past him, and they were missing with their kicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you've got a good player. Yeah. You yeah. know, and he was special. You know, but then you know, but then it, it didn't develop. You know, into uh, what talent he had yeah. you know, he, he ended up going out you know to other clubs and that but he did it okay because I said to him we did a, an Arsenal uh, Legends game at um, at Real Madrid and Nicholas was playing for us and I says oh where, where are you playing now you know so I've seen Nicholas as a 17 year old to about 19 20 then he left you know now I see him with he's got his own children and things like that you know this was only about two years ago mm. and I was like oh where are you living now and he went oh the palm in Dubai <laughs> well played <laughs> 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 it all works out <laughs> the end yeah <laughs> you were talking about mentality as well we saw you on Monster Cup didn't we um, yeah. uh, was, were, were, you, were you just happened to be cycling around uh, Wazing <laughs> Estate at the time or uh, um, well I, I have I do I do that regularly but um, yeah but I'll, obviously I'd, Ali had told me the lads were going up there and, uh, and I was like oh I've got to come up you know and then he was and then he you know, he, you know, he phoned me up and he says, oh, I'm really struggling. And he's, and I was like, oh, I'll come up and have a... What sort of a mindset was he in at the time, man? He <laughs> Just like this, like a guy that, <laughs> you know, Ali, you know, he, was like, <laughs> he was lost for words, so there's something seriously wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, he was just struggling, you know, and, and when I, even when I was there, you know, we could see fish, you know, there was, they were boshing out here, there and everywhere, but there, were, there was nothing happening in his swim. 
And um, you know, he, he had to resort to going and, and like stalking one, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, did your little chat with him make any difference? Do you think? I doubt it very much. He wanted to give me a hug, and I'm like, no way, stay away. Yeah. <laughs> Covid. Yeah. <laughs> did you watch? I mean, it was good though, wasn't it? I, yeah. I love Dovey's bit. I mean, Neil caught Neil caught some oh, lovely fish as, yeah. as well. Well, Ali caught as well. But seeing the, that bite on the unhooking mat with the mat oh, floating with, on I the know, lake with the and then the fish on, coming out with the pebble on the on the spool. I know. And seeing that stone yeah. come off. Yeah, it's just, but that I've never seen that before. You know, like where you've used an unhooking un- mat to, as your like your rod rest. It was brilliant. Yeah, well, there's no issues with um, you know, those not being waterproof anyway. So they float all right on the surface, <laughs> know, exactly. don't they? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, yeah, it, so it, it you fancy brilliant. fishing there then? I do. Yeah, um, there's a, there's a couple of other lakes that are that are close. You know, that are part of the complex that I will probably do them first. You know, and get back into into the swing of things. You know, it's been a while since I've like fired out. Well, no, I was going to say I fired out a spod rod, but I fired out a spod rod for carp. I've, I've actually been doing it on the river. <laughs> you yeah. know, like you know, to get the. Does uh, that bother you too much, spotting? No, I quite enjoy it. Yeah, yeah and I, I mean just, disturbance I and all that sort of stuff. <sighs> you know, yeah. If if ideally, I would I'd, I'd much rather use a bait boat. You know, right. because I know people, uh, some a lot of people are against them or whatever, but. What I always think is if you've got like 90 yards to throw tight to an island, how many times are you putting it in that tree mm. and then leaving tattle in the tree? You know, like she was a bait boat. Mm. You know, it's much safer. Are you um, much of a caster? I'd I imagine you could, could be. Could, I, yeah, yeah, I can if you were out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I've not really like fired it out like long distance. You know? Yeah. And I've not, I've, you know, wherever I've fished, I've always been fishing like to islands or stuff like that, you know. So even at Foxmere, you know, where I'd, I learned a lot of stuff there and it, and it follows you know on casting tight to islands and things you know and it's not until recently where you know like using the clip you know stuff like that that's really like in, in my fishing now you know because yeah. i've been going out with matt you know with the guru lads and you know like feeder fishing on I've the clip it. and all that and i just i absolutely love it you know and i'm gonna i'm gonna go and be going on thursday Oh, yeah. To my local one, yeah, where, where I've, I'll just be using hybrid feeder, two mil pellets, you know, pink tuna wafter. What were you catching on? I, I've, we've got a few pictures, actually, which we will put up after this, actually. Right. But um, when you were feeder fishing in that, you were, what were you catching with Matt? And um, you went out with the crew, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Ali was there as well, Yeah, wasn't Ali it? was there, and we, we, we caught, like, quite a few carp, you know. and It was, it was mainly carp, but I've, I've been going up there probably about a year now. And uh, my best session, I had 52 fish in a day, all on pink wafter, the pink, you know, the mainline tuna yeah, wafter, yeah, and two mil pellets around a hybrid feed, uh, yeah, the hybrid thing, yeah, and and it was just, I was just eating the clip into this little hole, and then it was, and it was so, it was so good, but uh, but you knew when you had a bigger fish because the bigger fish knew to go straight for the bush, you know, so I ended up putting like my 12 foot massive, you know, distance feeder rod on just to hold them really yeah it was just brilliant it look it, it does look like good fun yeah. we, we so we went to boddington Red, reservoir and we were doing that pretty pretty much probably the same sort of methods of what is what you were doing yeah and it just gets you thinking more oh yeah because i was fishing with pen we were partnered up with like different guru right. guys and yeah. uh and and seeing you know you really had to sort of rig the changes with color and stuff and the water was really colored that day and the way and that uh, you feed and stuff yeah. you know like we're firing pellet over you know like pellet waggler and things like that mm. i've started doing all that mm. and then and, and I, re- I recently so the first time that I, I used a pole, I used you know, Matt, Matt's poles. Can you imagine? That, that ain't cheap, is it? So I'm there fishing. First fish I hook is a 12-pound carp, and it's foul hooked. Oh, my God. It took me about three weeks to get yeah, it Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so I, I get it in, and then we're, we're fishing, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm quite enjoying it. But I mean, I was enjoying, I was like, well, what's the difference to a pole, to a float? And they were like, the accuracy. You know, because you're getting it right there. You know, you've got your pot on the end, just tipping oh, it, yeah. and and then I'm like shipping it back and all this, and then like looking back, and then I went, Kish. oh, <laughs> and I stabbed his pole, I did, did it twice, <laughs> and I was like, no, he went, don't worry, don't worry. I'm like, yeah, but that ain't cheap, it's is it? Grand there, isn't it? It's fine. <laughs> but uh, you know, but he apparently got spared bits anyway. But um, yeah, so that was my first introduction to pole fishing, and then I fished up at, um, whoa. I fished the the, uh, the darts competition. At, oh, uh, yeah, you said somewhere was it Guildford area? Did you? No, say? Where was, where no, was that, that was um, that was last year, right? I think it was 
some like Manor Farm or somewhere in, in near Birmingham. And, uh, and was that, that back in August? This one wasn't it? The, yeah, the most recent. One. Yeah, and it was you know, and, I, and it was just using like about three sections of a pole. Was and, it right? And I really enjoyed that. You know, like even like fishing shallow, you know, with a float, you know, and just keep chucking pellet over the top, you know, and then all of a sudden it just just goes you know a bit like getting them feeding near the top but then all of a sudden seeing all the bubbles coming up and thinking oh I'll get one on the bottom as yeah. well you know and just different things that I was learning how did you get on in the match I did all right you know I, I probably came top 10 something like that I know I beat Ali did you <laughs> yeah although he reckons he, he caught some that they didn't add on to his weight yeah <laughs> <laughs> he caught something he didn't get added, added on to his weight yeah he, he went no no I had like I had like right, three, or, yeah, <laughs> three or four kilo more than that and I was like oh right okay <laughs> was it in teams or it individual? was like a team of four yeah 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 it was a, the, yeah, it was a PDC thing it was at Gold Valley last year yeah and then oh I can't remember the, the way it was this year, but Barry Hearn does it. It was good he? fun, yeah. yeah. And the darts players, seem, they seem to be quite. Yeah, handy, Adrian Lewis they? is pretty good, yeah. by the way. Yeah. He's, he's a cheeky little match fisherman, but Jimmy Bullard's really good as well. So he seems to be good at everything. Yeah, Gold Valley last year, he was he was in our team, and um, it was funny because I like to to draw swims, like the celebrity or one of your team has to go and throw at the dartboard. You know, and then you get first pick or whatever. Oh, right. Yeah. And I went out <laughs> buying like 90 seats. Ago. <laughs> I was like, first. <laughs> so Jimmy Jimmy chose the swims or the four swims that we had, put himself in the best and won the match. <laughs> <laughs> but he's good though. He really He does a good. lot of match fishing, doesn't yeah. he, as well? Yeah, a lot. But, but you can certainly learn a lot from that. You were talking about, I did watch the uh, the thinking tackle with you and Ali at uh, Blue Paul, actually. Yes. And uh, you said yes. there, was, there was a story with that. <laughs> there was, yeah, because like that was another one that was, I think that was two nights. And, um, you know, and I was, I had to get, I had to go home in between as well. Um, but we, we were, Ali was, um, so I caught, I think it was about a, 21 something quite early on you know same thing with a little stone on the spool and off it went and i was actually on the phone when it went yeah 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 Yeah. and um so i caught that and then we were fishing in this corner and we could go around and we could chuck bait in but we could see these fish coming in but it was like really hard to get to cast to it so ali had got his spoon on the pole you know and like was Mm. shipping my rig out and then dropping it then he was going round and he was like doing a running commentary there's one coming in get get ready get ready And then, anyway, so then oh, he's like, "There's a, there's a big one coming. There's a big one coming in." And he's like, "He's got it. He's got it." And the next thing I see, my rod in a line tight, and I whack, and I'm into it. And I played it for ages, and the water was so clear, you could see it was a big one. And he's dancing around and everything. And then he starts <laughs> mentioning about Ronaldinho and all that. I'm thinking, You're going in soon, mate. <laughs> and then next thing, bang, the blooming line parted, didn't it? Oh. But he put. So he got this rig on and I looked at the rig afterwards and I went, Pat, surely that can't be right, Ali. So we've got like a running lead, <laughs> but he, he'd not got the, the inner, you know, like the, the little rubber yeah. sleeve that goes in it. Yeah. So the bare lead was touching the line at the top. Oh, it just frayed the line. Yeah. So, right. I, so I always blame Ali for losing what could possibly have been my first ever 40. Do you think it was a 40 pound? <laughs> it was a big one. Because I caught, I got one about a few, a few hours later that was like just over 30. And this one that I lost, of course they always are, but yeah, it was a big one. God blimey. I know. So that, that I always remind him. That was that the first uh, thinking tackle you done? Uh, was that the first um, thing you've done with Whoa. Ali? I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you sort of take into this kind of um, TV fishing stuff then? Yeah, I enjoy it. You know, yeah. It's what it is. It, you, you're out fishing, you know, and then you're getting, you know, you're getting film doing it and that and... It, it can be difficult, you know, with all, with all the people around. It's not the same as you just being at the lake on your own, you know, because mm. you can creep around and the fish have got no idea you're there, mm. um, you know, but it's different and, th- and that brings its own different pressure, mm. you know, trying to catch fish. Simon yeah. Scott said it's like fishing with the brakes on. Do you, do, do you feel on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because you can't, you, can't, you can't really do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, 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 wait, don't cast in yet. And you're like, oh, they're there. <laughs> right, tell them to cast in. They've gone. <laughs> yeah, it's all about, yeah, the light needs to be right and everything for filming. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little yeah. bit different. But, but it, it's, it's good, though. Yeah. yeah. And you said, like, um, you did have plans over the, over the, uh, the sort of corona period to sort of do things which have been put on hold a little bit. As well yeah you know there, i was going to be doing uh trawler men which really appealed to me which was like going out on an actual trawler boat fishing you know not with rod and line with big massive that would have nets. been brilliant to, yeah, yeah, yeah you know and, it, and it's 
you know, it's obviously it's not just going out pleasure fishing. You're actually working on the boat, um, you know. And I was really looking forward to that, but that got shelved um, because of the virus. But um, yeah, I'm sure, sure stuff will uh, will keep coming in. You because know, I like I like things like that that are a little bit different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds that sounds good. It sounds brutal going out to sea and doing that. Yeah. I used to like watching Wicked Tuna as well. Did you ever watch yes. that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that yeah, was cool. You know, and then because like some of them, they were catching them on line, weren't they? You know, obviously they call it line caught fish. Yeah, the line's about three miles long. Yeah, um, you know, they're watching that, and then actually watching people catching them with rod and line and things. You know, it's something that I did once. I went to Trinidad and Tobago with QPR, and I think it was in Tobago that we went out and we did a bit of deep sea fishing. Um, you know, after these big fish. And I caught a twenty-pound kingfish. I didn't even know it was on the line. The rod was that thick. <laughs> was it? <laughs> you know, for these massive tuna. I was like, no, nah, I don't think there's all. <laughs> Next thing, there's a twenty-pound kingfish there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and we've that, been that's like, when you know the gear's a little bit too heavy. Uh, isn't yeah, it? and we've been like going around all day, and like we we you know, we didn't catch any or, or even see any of the big fish. You know, I don't know. It was, I don't know the captain was rubbish or just whether the fish weren't there. You see that wicked tuna when they were catching great white shark. They they hooked a great white by accident, and it's like, you know, they're pretty rare around there yeah. as well, isn't it? You know, I guess there's a, there's there's biologists and stuff out there that would be, wanted wanted to be chucking those, yeah, and uh, exactly. and they just go and hook a great white shark. But um, so well, what about plans for the sort of the rest of the year? Then have you got? Is, is there anything coming up? For there'll, you? No, there'll there'll be bits coming in. Yeah. Um. You know, but if if it doesn't, it means I've got more time for fishing. Yeah. You know, and, and my golfing, and you know, and we we still skate. Me and my wife, you know, we, Do you? Frankie, we skate still. You know, she obviously she's very good skater <laughs> and a great coach um you know so we we do that um is that something that it, did it surprise you that you were doing that when, when, when you signed up for yeah. that series um yeah but i so i skated as a kid but i was never i was never coached you know i used to go to like the local rink in sheffield and uh, it was called silver blades at the time and and i used to go on a saturday afternoon like try and chat the girls up and all that sort of thing you know i know i was a decent skater but hockey skates and then it weren't until after I finished football. So like I'd not skated for 22 years. And then BBC asked me to go on, they did a, a one-off Strictly Ice Skating, whatever it was called. Uh, but Gaza was doing it. <laughs> and Gaza fell over and broke a bone in his neck. Cool. So, so they asked me to do it. And I got like 10 days to learn to skate again, actually do a routine <laughs> with somebody else. And I went on and I mean, won it, didn't I? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm still the really B- I'm still a reigning BBC champ. But then I did. Um, then I got asked to do Dancing on Ice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I swear to you, it's the most nervous I have ever felt in my life. Mm. Waiting in the tunnel to go out to do your routine live on TV when you know that it, it peaked the week before at 14 million viewers. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like being on air, Toby, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, we get the same similar. Nerves, I swear, yeah, you know, you, your mouth goes dry. I then, bet, yeah. You know, yeah. and then you get, you'll, you'll be going around and you'll have a little wobble and you're like, oh my God, what's happened to my legs? And yeah. But, but some nasty stuff's happened live on there. People, oh, people have had falls yeah. and stuff. Oh, I've, and, I've been like, yeah. you know, there was one, one instance where I was with my partner, we were trying to do this, this uh, bounce, like a bounce spin. And she tried to come out of it, slipped, and because I've still got her feet in my hands. I remember that. She split her oh, chin no, open. God, and yeah, yeah. They, they were, yeah, but you dropped her. I go, no, I've still got, <laughs> still got her feet in my <laughs> hands. That, that's like the ball, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that that was Pam, you know, and she did have a big cut under there. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, that, that it was it was a great experience. And then, then I actually got, you know, quite a few years later, I actually got to skate on the, you know, the ex-champions and friend, you know, people's favorites uh, and skated with my wife Frankie so that was yeah uh, that was really special but it sounds like you're just not afraid to sort of try anything you're you're good you'll give yeah, you'll I'll, give, uh, give stuff a go no I'll, I won't do Strictly we thought you were going to do the singing didn't we Tate yeah that well, was it oh, yeah, the, I yeah everybody yeah. was phoning yeah, yeah, me up yeah, about yeah. that even the BBC uh, what yeah, can you I, sing no can I help <laughs> but, but, but we, I th- we came in and had a debate about it one morning didn't we is that when it was Teddy it was Teddy Sheringham weren't yeah, it yeah that, that was it, it. Yeah. 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 yeah but they were like <laughs> no <laughs> I was like it's David definitely I know <laughs> if people, and then, but then I had I don't know whether it was pe- it was people from the programme got in touch with me and they said like look people think it's you please don't say it isn't you Wow, you know, so yeah, I just I kept that. it quiet until it actually <laughs> came out. But no, I won't do straight. I don't. I can't dance. I know I can't dance. I don't even dance when I'm drunk. So that's how bad I am. 
No, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Never could definitely carry it along anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh. Da- David, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. I've loved it. It's it. an absolute pleasure yeah. to have you coming on. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you. It's been good. We really enjoyed know, it. Yeah, easy guy to talk to. Yeah, but just it's great just to come, you know, and get the bring back their memories and stuff, you know, because mm. it's not all the time that you think about all the memories that you've had in fishing, and mm. it's just brilliant. Yeah, and hopefully people haven't heard so much about your fishing stuff, you know. The yeah, well, Ronaldinho seems to pop up yeah, quite exactly, a lot. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, when I get a £40 carp, everybody's going to know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, no. Like, no, yeah, thank you, mate. Really enjoyed it. Pleasure, yeah. Loved Pleasure. it. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you. The Thinking Tackle Podcast.